Hi everybody, thanks for joining me here today at Rewritten Vintage Homestead. It has been a busy, very busy two weeks. Uh, the rain seemed to stop about the second week of May. Uh, well, it let up enough that I could get outside and work on my gardens and get some things done around the homestead. And we still have a lot of projects to do. Um, I'm on vacation this uh, starting next week, so we're going to get a lot done. Uh, but I thought this video would be interesting maybe for you to join me over the last two weeks so I could show you what all uh, I did in my garden this year, what I did different from last year. I wanted to show you too. Uh, so I laid out my garden plan on paper here and the layout of my homestead. And I encourage you to do that too because it's just like a vision board and you can refer back to it and say when you go shopping for plants or you go shopping for fencing or whatever you might need, if you I have about four copies of this. I keep one on the refrigerator to look at all the time. I keep one in my purse for when I'm shopping. I keep one at work <laughs> because some of my ideas uh, come to me when I'm at work, so I want to scribble it on this. And then I just keep an extra one in my desk drawer in case I accidentally spill something on one of the others. <laughs> so. But these are real handy to keep in your purse with you so when you're shopping, you look at your layout and, oh yeah, I was going to do this this year. I was going to move that or this died or, or uh, I need to replace that. So I encourage you guys to do the same. And it's, it's ever evolving. Um, for example, uh, I had drawn out on mine that I wanted to expand my... Uh, one of my gardens I wanted to double it in size well I also had put on my plan that I wanted another garden plot for corn only but I only got as far as the other plot for corn only um, before really I was pushing it and even if I did get the other garden plot tilled I'm running out of time to plant things in it so that I will get done next year but I did get down the corn plot and I'm happy about that. So you guys, thanks for joining me and let's, let's just watch some small clips of things that I've done over the last two weeks and I'll probably add just a little more to it uh, because I still have two more days until it's been a complete two weeks. But uh, it's been a lot of work and I'm glad the, the hard work of it is done. Now all I have to do is keep up with my, my weeding on the beds that I'm going to weed, uh, the fertilizing that I'm going to be doing, which I'll be doing naturally, um, and taking care of my plants, making sure they're healthy, inviting uh, pollinators and insects that actually help your garden. I'll be doing all of those things, and, and uh, we'll talk about those as we do them. So let's see what I did. Let me see you. Hi everybody, thanks for joining me here again today at Rewritten Vintage Homestead. In between storms, I have so much to do and I'm so excited about it. And I'm gonna start right here on my strawberry bed. So, what happened was last year, I had my strawberries before my bed was ready and I was afraid I was going to lose them. So I went ahead and I planted them, but they're too deep. So I'm going to add some dirt. I'm going to lift them up a little bit. Um, I also mulched one side very well with uh, my uh, grass clippings, with uh, pine needles, with leaves, everything. Last year I just threw on the other side and boy do I have some really great dirt. So I'm going to spread that over, um, add some more soil to it so that I can spread my strawberries out. If your strawberries are too compacted together, you're going to have small berries. You got to give them room to move and so that they can get oxygen. Okay? So I think I'll work on this. I'll let you watch. Shoes on your feet. I 
probably feel the way I do If you live my life from day to day Probably say, Lord, why me? strawberries up I've been finding all kinds of red wigglers and those are the best kind of worms uh, if you want can you see it uh, they're the best kind of worms if you want to compost so what they do is uh, the worms dig down in the dirt and they eat our trash so the, the uh, leaves and all of the garden, um, all of your kitchen trash, your coffee filters, all of that stuff that you've been throwing on your garden, uh, well, the worms eat it. And then, you know, what happens when you eat, <laughs> it has to come out somewhere. So when it does, uh, the, when it comes out of the worm, it becomes compost. And so I'm so excited to see this is really, really full of red wigglers. And um, I'll have enough probably to harvest myself and move over to another area that's not doing as great and create my own in-ground compost bin. Let's see if we find one on this next one. shows your dirt is really really good you've got all kinds of wildlife in here uh, just eating it up and then pooping it out <laughs> so try to encourage worms in your garden you guys and if you can't find them or if you're scared to, to pull them out yourself order some get them in your garden as soon as you can so I got my strawberry patch all cleaned up and I got my plants spread out nicely. I re-mulched them with uh, my pine needles. And I wanted to remind you guys, don't forget to put some nice rocks 
in with your fruits and vegetables and and uh, when you're doing your gardening this year because we want to attract pollinators so we want to have a place where bees and uh, you know where bees and other pollinators can rest and uh, encourage them to come to, to our gardens okay so I added a few uh, rocks here to you and now I'm just gonna leave this all and wait for the fruit And now the hard work is going to begin. Uh, this is my new bed that I'm going to use for my Indian corn, my sunflowers, my pumpkins. And I'm going to top it off with some buckwheat. We worked on this. Uh, my cousin came over and tilled it up for me. And last weekend we scooped all kinds of horse manure in there uh, for fertilizer. And we are going to uh, get this planted today. It is hot, hot, hot out today, but there's a 90% chance of rain and I don't care. I'm going to get this in today. And it's so hot, old Marshall just wants to lay in the sprinkler and enjoy the summertime. So, a day and a half later, I got it done. <laughs> uh, four rows of strawberry popcorn and 12 rows of Indian corn and marigolds at each end. And I'm just waiting on them to pop up now. I'll be watching them every day. And I'm moving on to my next garden. My number one fan uh, bought me some elderberry bushes that I've been planting alongside of my strawberries. And I wanted to show you how uh, these work. So you'll get a pod uh, when you order those from whoever you order them from. It's this little dirt pod. When you get it, it's only gonna be about this big. So what you're going to do, and the ones we got didn't come with directions, but I figured it out. Uh, you're going to let those soak for a couple hours and then they swell up. When you get your elderberries, they're little twigs like this, but one of the ends is clipped at a slant. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to put that in the pod. Now you do not want to bury these, uh, the little sprigs that are coming out. That's why they give you this big, tall pod uh, to keep these from having to go underground. And then you're just gonna uh, put your dirt uh, around it up to that area there. And after you've soaked them a while, they're really easy to work with and, and squish down. that way you're able to keep the little uh, buds out and that's all there is to it now I tied uh, mine up to bamboo so that they would grow nice and straight and we'll see how they do so once again it's tater time now last year I planted my potatoes over at that end of the garden and this year I'm gonna plant them at the other end of the garden because I don't want to strip any uh, nutrients uh, from the soil. If you continue to plant, these are a lot of lessons that we learned during the Dust Bowl. If you continue to plant the same crops in the same places year after year, you're stripping your minerals and nutrients out of the, the ground. So you wanna keep rotating your crops now I dug a trench about uh, six inches deep and to that I added about two inches of sand. I've got my potatoes down there. They've already been hardened. Uh, you can see the eye. I'll try to get a little closer for you. And you want to plant the eye facing up. Okay. Uh, so you want them about 12 inches apart and about four inches deep. And then I'm going to mound over the top of them. 
Now I wanted to show you guys. See, I've been, uh, as I dig my ditch, I hill. I hill it up into a pile on my way down. Um, and something else that I know everybody doesn't have but really helps with the uh, garden work is if as you're moving down your line here to plant your uh, potatoes, if you have a big German Shepherd <laughs> that can lay down and move down the line with you every time you move so that you don't have to hoe the dirt on the opposite side of the beans flat. Marshall, are you helping me in the garden? Are you ashamed because you're laying on my beans? <laughs> yes. Right smack in the middle of my beans. So despite how frustrating it's been to get my garden in with all of the rain and excessive heat and rain, <laughs> I planted my corn last Saturday and it's already popping up in rows. I'm so excited. This is my popcorn. And I've got uh, four rows of popcorn and 12 rows of flint corn. And today Marshall and I are finally gonna be finishing up our two gardens. We got one in with corn I want to show you my strawberries after a week. Don't they look gorgeous? All that rain really helped. I wanted to point out that I put some rocks in my garden too, if I didn't tell you that already, to attract the pollinators so that they have a place to rest. And I am going to put out a little bowl of water too. Aren't we buddy? Those smell good? Are you excited about strawberries, Marshall? Yes. So we got to put out some water for them too. Uh, over here, I have my row of elderberries. And then I've got one, two, three, four rows of gem corn. Hasn't started popping. Oh, yep, there it is. That was planted last Sunday, and this is Sunday, so that was a week ago. I had some um, volunteer watermelons and pumpkins come up, so I'm leaving them. I just don't have the heart to, after they struggled through the winter, to get rid of them. And I have my peppers, every kind of pepper you can think of. Two rows of those. Four rows of tomatoes, so I have Big Boy, Better Boy, and Roma. Going to make a lot of sauce this year. I'd like to. Some barbecue sauce, too. In the middle there, you can see my volunteer pumpkins. We're planting pumpkins, too. As soon as the corn comes up a little higher, then we'll do the three, uh, three sisters uh, method where the pumpkins go in next. And then we'll be the buckwheat. And down here are my Roma tomatoes. I've got a row of beans. I'm not putting, I'm going to do my beans in succession planting this year because I had way too many ready all at once last year. And I've got room for my uh, potatoes right there. So today's job is we're going to work over this area here, which is where my cucumbers go and some of my flowers. Before I put my cucumbers in, I'm going to mix my kitchen compost with dirt. You can see it's got a little bit of everything in there and it's got banana peels and we're going to give these cucumbers a little boost of potassium. I've got all the weeds gone, but I'm going to update my fence too. So we'll take a look at that when we're done. Oh no, you're in jail! <laughs> you're in the hoose cow, what'd you do?
So it's also been uh, a couple weeks since we made our apple cider vinegar and I just took the top off. You guys can see it fizzing and bubbling in there. That's the acidity that we have created. So now I'm just gonna take uh, this and I'm gonna strain it. And all of the apple scraps, I'm just gonna throw out in my compost, but you can smell it and it smells really good. This is what we have. This is our vinegar. And so I'm gonna pour that back into my jar and I'm gonna put keep it in the refrigerator. And this will last me about a month you can drink it, you can cook with it, and it's so healthy because we made it naturally at home. So the corn's coming up nicely, the garden's doing great, and this is the time where we sit back and we let nature take its course. Now, we will have to come out here and we'll have to check for bugs, and we will have to keep feeding our soil, and we'll have to keep making sure that there aren't any um, moles or anything tearing tearing up the roots of our plants and now it's all about maintenance maintenance and feeding and encouraging pollinators to come to your garden so while nature is taking its course what are the things that we should be doing now what should we be focusing on well you're always going to have projects at home that you need to do um, this is a good time to do those, but it's also the time you want to take to be prepared. So the food that you have in your freezer from last year, when you canned and when you froze and um, when you preserved, those are the items you want to go through now, clean them out. You want to check out your stash of cans. Uh, you want to see the canned goods that you've bought and make sure that they haven't expired. What do you need to stock up on? what's on sale that you can get now to build your pantry back up. So while we're letting nature take care of itself and uh, our plants will start becoming fruitful and plentiful, in the meantime, we need to get ready and clean out things that uh, we didn't use or that are going to expire and make way for the new harvest that'll be coming because once harvest time comes in August and the first of September, we won't have time for anything else. Oh.